Hey everyone, um, Jeff, and today it's time for my January reading wrap up part two. I will link part one in the description box below, of course. Now, January was a really good reading month, as I said in part one. I read 18 books in total, which is slightly above average. And in this part of the video, I'm going to be talking about 10 of those books. So, the first three uh, books I'm going to talk about are ebooks that I read on my Kindle, so I don't have any nice copies to show you and that would be The Serpent, The Thief and The Master all by Claire North. Now this is a trilogy of novellas, each of them are exactly 100 pages in length which frankly the fact that all three of them are exactly 100 pages is actually unusual, I've never come across these with novellas before although I'm not as familiar with novellas to be honest. I really enjoyed these, I read these entirely because of Paul's um, recommendation and his enthusiasm for them. Uh, Paul is a fellow booktuber whose channel will link in the description box below of course. These are a set of fantasy novellas set in a world that is very much ours but the fantasy element comes from this weird and mysterious um, game house which is indeed the name of the trilogy overall. This game house, there are two sort of areas within the game house. There is the lower level uh, game house where you can go in and just um, play for normal high stakes gambling and then there is the more upper level game house where you need to actually uh, become a member by doing something quite significant to get access to them. And in the upper game house games you can bet not just material goods but you can bet literal years of your life, like 10 years of your life, 20, your memories, your skills in certain areas, um, emotional uh, abilities, uh, actual physical abilities, you know, your sense of smell or your extremely good hearing if you have it, you could try, you could essentially gamble that and if you lose then you'll have merely um, normal hearing rather than really good hearing. It's quite unusual but it works extremely well. The free book can be read separately however I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend reading them strict, strictly in order from the serpent first then the thief then the master because each one builds up into the others and I really enjoyed the build up and the way they interact between them because there's links from the first into the second and then the second into the third indeed the things from, that happen in the first book that that affect things that happen right at the end of the third and I just really enjoyed these, they were just really fun they were well paced, they were well thought of and frankly it makes me um, have confidence in Claire North as an author and indeed I will be looking out for more by her in the future because I greatly enjoyed these, they're just really fun and I would recommend them for anybody who just wanted to be a little bit different and maybe a bit quicker read in between other heavier books because they were frankly great for that. The next three books that I read also happened to be a trilogy and that was War Dogs by Greg Bear, Killing Titan and Take Back the Sky. This is a new one and it is absolutely brand new. It's only released this week or it might even be released next week I'm not sure. Overall, this is the War Dog trilogy, named after the first book. This is military science fiction, where there is a, a benevolent race of aliens have come down to Earth. They have started to give humans their, their various um, advanced technology, and they don't want anything for it as such. However, they tell humans that we need to fight their war for them. This alien race. Is only extremely small in number. There are literally dozens of these aliens in total. That's it. And this big alien race that's sort of following them across the galaxy, and in, and they're responsible for wiping out other races, apparently. And saying that basically because um, humanity is got a large population, and indeed we are relatively warlike, unsurprisingly, we can sort of basically fight these terrible aliens off with the help of their technology. The premise is really really good in the books, however it 
doesn't really fail to deliver for me personally, which I was, a, I do think is a great shame because I was expecting something more than what I read in these books. I read two previous Greg Bear books and I really enjoyed them. This trilogy I really didn't enjoy. The ideas were great, the writing was good in parts, but it just, and I don't think about these books that didn't work for me on a personal level. I mean, the greater idea of the books with um, the soldiers that are going to Mars and then they end up on the Titan as well. They're trying to fight this terrible enemy and figure out why they're fighting this enemy. Are things as they seem to be or is it all a destruction or a lie? But if, you know, what is the truth? What are they doing there? And who are these benevolent aliens that are happily helping them for relatively little reward? Are they as good as they seem? I mean, obviously not, because that's going to be um, a significant point at some point when you find out that they're not doing it purely out of the generosity of that. They may not be as terrible as you think, but they may be even worse. So it's an interesting concept. But just one that wasn't quite done as well as what I would have hoped because it's a bit, I don't know, the pacing feels a bit off on that point because it goes quite quickly and it's nicely paced and then it will just stop dead and things don't happen for a while, which is a slight annoyance, but it's just one of those things. So for the next thing I read, that would be The Gods Themselves by Isaac Asimov. This won the 1973 Hugo and Nebula Award, so I'm not going to talk about it too much now because obviously this will be talked about as part of my SFF award winning book project, which will be next week. Suffice to say though that I didn't overly enjoy this. I mean it was good, it had perfectly good ideas, but the mid middle of the book, the book is split into three sections, the middle section I think sort of stops the book dead. It's going along at a good pace and then it's a completely different way of writing and indeed the characters are completely different. It's just different in every single respect. And whilst I understand why Asimov did the middle section the way he did, it doesn't help the book though, it really doesn't. You could do it completely differently and it would still make for an interesting book and it would make for a much better book in my opinion because it, it it ruins the flow of the book because it just feels drastically different and it feels almost like a different kind of book than what it is. But I'll talk about this next week anyway. The next book is The Continuous Catherine Mortineau by D. G. Compton. This was one that I absolutely loved really, really badly. Actually, I'm going to do a separate review of this within the next two weeks. So I'm not going to say too much of it. Now, suffice to say, this was written in the early 70s, but this could equally have been written last week because the subjects that it talks about and the way the characters uh, work and exist in this world is frankly fantastic and it could be really, really modern, but it could also equally be from the 70s. You know, it's, it's, it's very much a timeless book, which is not easy to achieve when you're talking about science fiction and also when you're trying to do near future science fiction because near future science fiction in the 70s is basically now in theory but it's not quite the overall idea of it is in this world there is no longer death from uh, diseases or anything like that basically the only reason people die is through old age or obviously serious accidents one woman obviously Catherine Mortno of the title she finds out that she has a um, serious fatal illness and she'll be dead within a month, four weeks. This is obviously significant to her because she doesn't quite know how to comprehend it and how to understand it, but she knows this is going to affect her life because in this world things like this, which do happen very, very occasionally, are big deals. The media will get hold of it and then they'll come to her and they'll be wanting to basically film the last weeks of her life like a very morbid and very sort of dark reality show basically 
and the way the this works in this world is quite unusual as well because the media have got to a point where you almost can't stop them if they want to film you they can just basically follow you around all day long and they can literally i mean they can sort of actually attacking you in your own home they can do pretty much anything else and i'd actually be curious what people of a more um legal mind think of this book because there are some very interesting legal points which i do think of but it's also very emotional and very well written and frankly i love this book really badly once again the penultimate book that i read in january was a fall of moon dust by arthur c clark now i've really enjoyed everything i've read by arthur c clark in the past and this is no exception however this is not my favorite of the clocks i've read so far it is a good solid book but nothing truly fantastic because it doesn't follow quite the same grand ideas or the epic scope we need the phenomenal writing is not quite there almost but just one step away from it it is still a really good solid book however it's basically um set on the moon unsurprisingly and it's about the uh, passengers and crew of the tourist cruiser Celine, which is a moon buggy essentially uh, designed for tourists one day when it's going along its route it falls through the uh, soft uh, lunar dust because at the time um, one of the areas in it the sea of tranquility and indeed another area called the sea of silence thought to be so flat because of the lunar dust it's thought to have a massive layer of lunar dust just covered the whole area like a big bowl basically of like super fine sugar and so obviously that's not the actual the case but that's what was uh, thought of maybe at the time and now this um moon buggy is stuck underground the rest of the company is trying to find them but of course it's not naturally designed to do something like this because nobody thought it could ever happen and it's an interesting story on the way they interact within this little tiny little um rover and the rest of humanity both on the moon and back on earth trying to get to them and sort of you know trying to jolly them along and trying to actually keep their spirits alive therefore obviously if their spirits are alive they will remain physically alive hopefully and be able to find them and get out of it it was well written the ideas were good it just wasn't quite my favorite um obviously clark but then you know that's bound to happen they're about to be a after the clark that isn't quite as good as the others but it's still a good solid book and i would recommend it for science fiction fans overall the last book that i read was an ebook on my kindle and that is Lunar Wolf Moon by Ian MacDonald. Now, this is the sequel to Lunar New Moon, which I read last year, and which was actually one of my favourite books of last year, 2016. This is another fantastic book and a fantastic sequel that really does live up to the first book. I wouldn't say it's better than New Moon, but it's not worse. It's just equal to that first book. Basically, if you like the first book, which I obviously did, then you will want to read this second book. The first book is quite simply a list how I think of it. It's almost like the Godfather and the Mafia on the moon. It's these five dragons or five grand families. They each own various parts of the sort of industry on the moon, whether it be oxygen, water, precious metals, whatever else. And these families are a permanent sort of war status almost with each other, you know. All of them have at least one other family that they, that they dislike. They will have one family that they are sort of allies with, relatively speaking, although they'll all quite happily stab each other in the back or in the face or indeed chop each other's heads off. You know, they're quite happy to do all three of those things, preferably at the same time, even if it needs to be. I loved this book. I really did. In this, uh, the book goes a little bit onto Earth and the way Earth works a bit which I thought was quite interesting because the first book, of course, is entirely on uh, Luna, on the moon. Now, whilst um, this is meant to be a duology, this is meant to be the second of just two books, 
it could be a duology as it ends now but really I think it needs another book now actually I think there's going to have to be a third one in this series to finish it off because whilst it does work perfectly well as it is now it doesn't quite close everything down the way you would expect it to so there will be hopefully anyway from my point of view and indeed many other people that I know a third book in this world because frankly a third book will do things that obviously the previous book, two books couldn't do and hopefully will bring out new viewpoints and frankly be just as fantastic as both the first two. If you read the first book I would greatly recommend it and frankly I don't really need to recommend it because if you've read the first book then you'll be wanting to read this for certain anyway. So with that said that's it for all the books I've read in January. If you've read any of these or would like to then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion. All my social media links as well as anything else I talked about can be found in the description box below. Otherwise, I mean that said, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.